Just because 2020 has been a real Grinch doesn't mean that we can't experience love actually. Whether you're home alone, lost in New York, or at a Holiday Inn during this Christmas vacation, we hope you can join us for our Christmas Eve service, hosted by me, a die-hard Christmas fan. While it might not be a white Christmas outside, we will have a Christmas carol or two, a Christmas story, and learn about a wonderful life with Jesus. You won't have to take the Polar Express or get a ride from Santa Claus or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Just jingle all the way to Facebook or YouTube on December 24th at 4.30 p.m. So don't be a cotton-headed ninny-muggins. Get yourself to our online Christmas Eve service. Hello, good morning, South Metro Vineyard family, friends, and visitors. Thank you for joining us for our online service. My name is Jack, and I'm really glad that you're here. We're going to jump into worship soon, but first a few announcements. If you're new with us this morning or you'd like to learn more about who we are, I encourage you after the service, go check out our website, smvineyard.org. There you can find all sorts of helpful information. There you can also fill out a digital connection card so we can get to know you a little bit better as well. On our website, you can also find ways to give electronically if that's something you're interested in. Otherwise, you can always mail in your tithes and offerings to the address below. Finally, we have two emails set up for you guys, prayer at smvineyard.org and needs at smvineyard.org. Both of those are open for you to email with any prayer requests you have or any needs you have that we can help you with during this time. So I encourage you guys to use those emails, go check out our website, do all those good things. And now we are going to enter into a time and space of worshiping God in his presence. So if you would stand with me, if you're able, and sing with me, I'm going to uh, pray for us to get us started. Lord, we welcome you into our lives in this moment. We welcome your power. We welcome your presence. Would you help us to humble ourselves before you? Let go of the things that we're hanging on to, that that are the worldly things that we hang on to, God. And give those things over to you. We ask that you would have your way this morning, that you would dwell with us this morning, that you would speak and you would move uh, amongst us and through us this morning in love and power. And as we draw closer to celebrating your birth, Jesus, Um, May we be able to just like reflect and sit in awe and wonder of your perfect love and your majesty and your beauty, the beauty of the Advent story. The love that permeates the Advent story. A story that's for me and a story that is for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plains And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strain Gloria in excelsis Why this jubilee? Why your joyous strings prolong? What the gladsome tidings be? Which inspire your heavenly song? Let's sing Gloria. Glory to God. 
God, yes. Sing, come to Bethlehem. Come to Bethlehem and see Christ whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee. Christ the Lord, the newborn King. to God in the highest. We join those all through history who sang the same thing. Glory to God in the highest. Can we sing that one more time? my heart make me yours take all that I am every thought Jesus be my song be my love and wait from my sleep, faithful one, sing all my life, all my life for you, every single thing, all my love for you, every hope and dream, yeah. Me from my grave and roll me up with hands that hold the stars with fiery love. Oh, 
Holy Spirit, come and light me up. Hands that hold my heart with fiery love. Oh, oh fiery love. Lay me down at your feet For I have sown in tears And I'll wash them clean And Jesus be my soul Be my love My heart is overwhelmed And I cannot hear your voice I'll hold on to what is true Though I cannot see If the storms of life they come And the road ahead gets steep I will lift these hands in faith I will believe I'll remind myself all that you've done and the life I have because of your son love came down and rescued me love came down and set me free and I am yours I am forever yours mountain high on Valley low, I sing out, remind my soul that I am yours. 
I am forever yours. Oh, I'm yours When my heart is filled with hope And every promise comes my way when I feel your hands of grace rest upon me Staying desperate for you, God Staying humble at your feet I will lift these hands in praise I will believe I'll remind myself of all that you've done and the life I have because of your son Love came down and rescued me Love came down and set me free And I am yours I am forever yours Mountain high, old valley low I sing out my my soul Down. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. And I am yours. Oh, I am forever yours. Mountain high, oh valley low. I sing out, remind my soul that I am yours. Oh, I am forever yours. I am yours, I am yours, for all my days, Jesus, I am yours, I am yours, I am yours, for all my days, Jesus, I am I am yours, I am yours, for all my days, Jesus, I am yours, and I am yours, I am yours, for all my days, Jesus, I am down and rescued me love came down and set me free and i am yours i am forever yours mountain high old valley low i sing out remind my soul that i am yours i am forever yours that I am yours, I am forever yours. Lord, we are yours this morning. We are yours. Would you come, would you keep moving amongst us? We thank you for this time spent in your presence, worshiping you and your majesty and your glory and your wonder, God. We pray your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for worshiping with me, guys. We got one more Sunday left of 2020. I hope to see you there in person or online. Um, enjoy the message and take care. Hey, South Metro Vineyard Church and all of our guests joining us online. Uh, Ready? <clears throat> Smile. Do you want to say that, Barb?
No, I'll say. <clears throat> hey, South Metro Vineyard Church and all of our guests joining us online. We hope you have enjoyed our Advent series called Love Came Down. And I just want to thank Nick and Nikki and Amy uh, for doing such a great job. And I'm just so grateful for all of our pastors and our staff and our leaders uh, this past year. They've just been incredibly amazing with all the adversity uh, that we have faced and they've really uh, stepped up. And uh, Shane Claiborne in Common Prayer, he says something about Advent. He says, Advent meaning the coming is a time when we wait expectantly. Christians began to celebrate it as a season during the fourth and fifth centuries. Like Mary, we celebrate the coming of the Christ child, what God has already done. And we wait in expectation of the full coming of God's reign on earth and for the return of Christ, what God will yet do. But this waiting is not a passive waiting. It is an active waiting. As an expectant mother knows, this waiting also involves preparation, exercise, nutrition, care, prayer, work, and birth involves pain, blood, tears, joy, release, and community. It is called labor for a reason. Likewise, we are in a world pregnant with hope, and we live in the expectation of the coming of God's kingdom on earth. As we wait, we also work, cry, pray, ache. We are the midwives of another world. And so today, as we've lit the candles of hope, of peace, that Jesus is our peace, that Jesus is our joy, today we light the candle to remind us that Jesus uh, Christ the Lord is our love. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And my daughter, Allie, is going to light the candle. It's not a traditional candle. Uh, but she's going to light it for us. And so we have lit the candle. Thank you, Allie. I appreciate it. Okay. Today we're going to be talking about love. Just pulling up some stuff here. <clears throat> um, and I also wanted to just share with you uh, the, this Thursday, we'll be uh, celebrating the, the birth of Jesus so with a Christmas Eve service that's online only. Uh, it'll be premiering at about uh, 4.30 p.m. on the 24th on Christmas Eve. And after it premieres, you can watch it during the premiere, which uh, we could we can all watch that together and, and uh, talk back and forth and those types of things. Or you can watch it any time after that because it'll stay posted. It's going to be family friendly. It's going to be about 30 minutes. And we just thought this would be uh, something good for families uh, at their homes, uh, doing what they, they do to celebrate Christmas, dinners, those types of things, to be able to, to watch that together and, uh, and give our staff some, some time uh, to spend uh, with uh, their families on Christmas. Um, and so... You know, the, the gospel, according to the New Testament, is the incredibly good news that uh, the crucified and risen Jesus is Lord of the world. Uh, and this came by way of Jesus coming to us, Emmanuel. I like how the message puts it in John 1, 14. It says, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes. The one-of-a-kind glory, like Father, like Son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. His life, Jesus' life and death and resurrection began the transformation of the world. And that transformation that Jesus began in his life, death and resurrection can happen to you. It can happen to anybody if you will trust and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now that is the greatest news and the greatest gift. And that is something uh, for us all to celebrate. And it's truly the only reason we know what love is, is because Jesus loved us first, the scriptures tell us. And not only are we <clears throat> personally transformed, the Bible tells us that those of us who believe and receive Jesus get to partner with God 
in this great project of world transformation, the renewing and the restoring process uh, that the world needs uh, so, so much. Uh, we, we get to be a part of that, that Christ lived and died and rose again, and he gave us the Holy Spirit to transform the world and a process that will not be completed until Jesus kind of returns. But it's begun now. Uh, and we're going to look at John chapter 15, 19, 9 through 17. And it says this, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept the Father's commands, and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because servants do not know their master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. And this is my command, to love each other. You know, in John chapters uh, 13 through 17, Jesus is speaking to his disciples the night before he was going to be crucified. And what does he talk to his disciples about? Um, if you knew that you were going to die tomorrow within the next 24 hours, you knew that, what would you talk to your family uh, about? Uh, what would you talk to your friends about? If you knew this is the last time you were going to see people that mattered to you, uh, what would you talk, talk to them about? Well, when Jesus knew that he was going to die the next day, <clears throat> he talked about love. 31 times in John chapters 13 through 17. And he talked, he talked about this love, how much he loved his little band of followers, how much he wants them to love each other, and how much he wants them to extend his love out to the world. He talks about love. And, and we need this. We need this now more than ever to be reminded of, of God's love for us, that he asked that to, uh, for us to love each other in the same way, and then to extend that love uh, beyond whatever differences, uh, that his, his love is for all, all people. And, uh, and so I just want to walk through a few points. You know, number one, Jesus' first priority was love. You know, nine times in the nine verses we read in John 15, and 31 times in John 13 through 17, Jesus talks about this love, and it is entirely as you would expect, because love was always in the first place for Jesus. It's why the Father sent Jesus, because he so loved the world. You know, the Sadducees came along, and they asked Jesus a bunch of questions about the law, and he, he answered them. And then another religious group, the Pharisees, came along, and they tried to trap Jesus with questions. And here's what we read in Matthew. It says, hearing that... Uh, that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert of the law, tested him with the question. They said, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Uh, what, what's the first place, Jesus? Uh, what is your great priority? There is something like over 600 commandments in the Old Testament. What's first? And Jesus answers and he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And I think that's really important <clears throat> to be reminded of that self part, you know, to love your neighbor as yourself, as you care for yourself, as you take care of yourself, as you meet uh, the needs that you have, you're supposed to do that for other people. And he says, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And he says, let me sum up about 2,000 years of, of biblical teaching in a way that everyone can understand. Love God and love your neighbor. And then Jesus has a third, of course. We call it the, the, the that's the great commandment. <clears throat> and then he, he adds a great commission to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that he has commanded. And surely I'm with you to the, to the very end. And so... What, he, what is he teaching his followers? He's teaching them to love God, 
to love your neighbor, and then to go out and teach people, teach other people to love God and to love their neighbors, and that that love occupies first place uh, for Jesus. And so uh, that's so important for us as disciples to remember uh, what the church is supposed to be about and, and this, this love uh, that, that God has for us and wants us to have for each other and to extend to the world around us is incredibly important. Uh, it's life-changing. It can change the world. Uh, and so Jesus is not only, he, 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 um, he not only tells us about this being a priority, showing that, but he invites us to participate in his love. He says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you, now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. So not only is love first place, but Jesus says for his followers that uh, we, we never leave love behind. It's, uh, he says, I want you to remain in it. Uh, you never get beyond this. Love is not an airport that you fly in and out of um, to get to where you're really going. Love for the Christian, love for the human being is like soil that is a tree planted um, without the without the tree would die its love is like water for fish uh, love is like air for our lungs love is the rooting it's the environment it's the atmosphere uh, love is our eternal destiny um, what is heaven other than to be embraced by the love of God for other forever and Jesus says for me Love is first place, and for you, you need to remain and to abide and to be rooted and to never let go of, of Jesus' love, even for a moment, uh, to stay in that love. And he says, if you keep my commands, um, you know, how, how do you stay in that love? He says, keep my commands, and you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. You know, so God's love for you and me is, is unconditional. Our, our obedience uh, doesn't provoke him to love us. <clears throat> and our disobedience doesn't provoke him to stop loving us. Uh, that we can never be out of bounds or, or get too far from the reach of God. But if you and I uh, are to live an experience of God's love and to stay rooted in his love and live out the center of God's love, then there is a condition. And the condition is that you and I obey Jesus' commands, uh, to be conscious. Uh, I love that, you know, our purpose of our church is becoming like Jesus and being Jesus to the world because it's exactly this, that responsiveness of the Holy Spirit, of God's word, of a still small voice. And when we say becoming like Jesus, being Jesus to the world, it, it, that's all about discipleship. That's all about walking it out and being responsive to God and what he's wanting to do in your life and, and what he's wanting to do you know, through your life, uh, those two things as you walk this out. So, so be obedient. Uh, and he says, you know, I have told you this so that your joy may be complete. And he's talking here about the great power. Uh, the power of Jesus' love is, is life-changing. It's transforming. Every single human being wants to be happy. We want to be satisfied. We want to be filled. Uh, whether you know it or not, we want to feel something of the joy of heaven right now. How do you become happy? How do you taste that little bit of heaven? Uh, you know, there's a lot of things the earth, uh, the world offers, um, but we know that the only thing that is the power of God's love uh, for you and me. And he continues, he, he lays out this, this pattern of love, uh, this pattern of how, you know, the, the fathers love me, so I'm going to, you know, I've loved you. Now you need to, to love each other. And uh, he wants us to, to be reminded of that, that power pattern. Um, the Apostle Paul, he prayed for the church. Uh, we, could, we could pray for ourselves and the church. And he says, you know, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love surpasses knowledge, and that you may be filled with a measure of all the fullness of God, the infinite dimensions of the love of Jesus. 
He prays that we would grasp how wide is the love of Christ and it is wide enough to embrace every single person that's ever lived. It doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. Um, there's no one, no life, no matter what they've done, that's not redeemable, that Jesus can't save and transform. Um, and because Jesus' love is so deep. And he's, he, he, you ask how long, uh, you know, it's, it, you just could delve into this, you know, more and more and more of, of you know, how long. There's no hole so deep that God's love is not deeper still, you know? It's just amazing, and I've lived that and experienced that in my life, and I'm, I'm still, uh, you know, put, I'm amazed by his love for me. Uh, you know, he truly did. You know, we didn't know what love was till he came, and he gave love a face, and he gave love a name, and he gave love away, uh, like the sky gives the rain. You know, I, I, there's a song in, in my head right now, um, and it's so true. Um, uh, you know, and, and it's it's not just this love that uh, uh, it's not just words. It's 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 you know that he laid down his life. He proved it. He showed it to us. He he came to us. You know, he he became God with us. He left everything. He had it, he had it all, and he left it all to come to us in a in a lowly uh, manger and to uh, walk this earth to. Uh, teach us to live with us on in streets of dirt and to die a criminal's death and to um, you know to to save us and it's just a, it's a it's an amazing thing and you go on you know Jesus love for us is the greatest privilege um, that we have uh, in our lives and you know he says you are my friends if you do what I command I no longer call you servants because servants do not know their master's business. Instead, I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Do you realize what a privilege that is? Everything uh, that I've learned from my father. And, you know, the Bible uses a lot of words to describe uh, the love of Jesus for us. We're called to God's children, God's sons and daughters. The church is called the bride of Christ. We're called the apple of God's eye, the chosen people, a family of God. But in John 15, he simply calls us friends. I mean, whew, it's just an amazing thing that Jesus gives us this wonderful definition of friendship. Um, and that, you know, Jesus gives us this much deeper, richer, more intimate understanding of friendship than just a person with whom I share some similar interests. Jesus says, a friend is someone that you trust with your secrets. Um, and, and it's all opened up to you. You know, the world is so clueless about so many things about God. Um, it doesn't know very much about God's love, but Jesus shares the secret of God's love with you, who are his friends. The world doesn't know much about the way uh, to be healed and restored, but Jesus shares with you, his friends, the way of healing, the way of restoration, the way of salvation. The world doesn't understand the cross, but Jesus shares with you the meaning of the cross. The world doesn't know what's going to happen when you die or a loved one dies, but Jesus shares with you, his friends, that when you or a loved one dies, you're going to be embraced by the love of God. You know, the world doesn't know the future of, of the planet, but Jesus talks about a new heaven, a new earth. Um, you know, the world lacks a sense of purpose and what it's all about. Is there anything worth living for? But Jesus shares with you, his friends, the ultimate source and meaning and purpose in life. And we get to partner together with Jesus in transforming this world. I mean, what a privilege. I hope you can take that in. And, you know, the last thing is that Jesus' love produces long-lasting results in our lives. It changes everything. I don't know about you, but for me, you know, if God were to remove his hand from my life, uh, the blessings that he's given me, the fruit uh, of, of living a life in obedience and, and walking with him uh, is, is just, there's none other like it. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that'll last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Um, you know, it's just an amazing thing. There's something remarkably powerful about 
God's love for us. There's something remarkably powerful about seeing, in spite of our differences that, that we may have, and we have many, uh, but we have so much common ground, and the center of it all is God's love. That's what brings us together. And there's something remarkable about seeing Christians, seeing God's community uh, love each other. Um, many of us have struggled at some point in our life to you know, believe that God exists and, and if he's actually interested in our personal lives and, and how do we help people who struggle to believe uh, in the existence of God or in the personal involvement of God? How do we help people lay hold of God's uh, concern? It says, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God's love lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Love changes things, it changes people. When the world see the love of Christians for each other and for them, their love makes the visible God visible to everyone around. You and I have that ability. You know, it's one of the things I've missed so much. You know, I just want to tell you guys, I've, I've missed being together so much. You are the why. You know, even though we've been doing in-person with different restrictions since September, I, I, I miss all the community. You know, that for me, that's 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 my... That's my why, the congregation, the people, the, the church, you know, all of us, the community, the relationships that we have. Uh, and, and I know we're, we're doing different things online and stuff, but I, I really miss that. And, and uh, I think we took it for granted. Uh, we didn't take advantage of it, and we need to think about that because uh, that's my why. It's what I've missed uh, so much is, is being together. Uh, and and this, this love... Uh, that we have. Uh, it's so rich and it's deep and uh, and I so appreciate all of you. I appreciate you uh, hanging in uh, with us as we chart, you know, kind of walk through uh, these uncharted waters and, and try to make the best decisions that we can and, and uh, you know, the world needs us. The world needs love. The world needs us to continue uh, to share with them, you know, that everybody's welcome, everybody's needed. Uh, and everybody is changed uh, by the love of God. And to extend that um, to the world, we get to do that together because God, you know, Jesus, the, the Father loved the Son, the Son loved us, and they have asked us to love the world. And in that, uh, we, can, we can change the world. So I hope that gives you something to think about today. Uh, appreciate and love all of you. And uh, I hope that... Uh, you have a, a great time celebrating with those that you can um, during this uh, Christian Christmas season. Um, God bless you, and we'll see you next time.